such an asshole. It was going to kind of be a somber, dark, but productive, stoic. Then I see Sean. Does anyone have any lukewarm English muffins that I can use to poke the cap? <laughs> F you, Sean. <laughs> All right. We got a sad topic. And um, I think it's uh, uh, ap- this is probably the foremost topic for every young man out there. <clears throat> um, it's your existential crisis, uh, especially Western men. And uh, hopefully this will answer many men's questions because one guy has sent me a request over at Asshole Consulting where if you have questions, Cappy's got answers over at assholeconsulting.com as you got money. <clears throat> Hi, Cap, big fan. Been binge watching, binge watching a YouTube vids for the past few weeks and enjoying all of them. My question is about what to do with, with my life on the other side of making it, a problem that seems crass and boastful to people who may still be at a starting point, but one that I've been wrestling with for the past six months. I'm 36, single, no significant, no girlfriend, significant other or kids or other real responsibilities, and I work in a very specialized field that is extremely in extremely high demand. I do my own 1099 contracting, so no boss to answer to. Typically, I take home. Get ready for this. Everyone better be sitting down. Four to $5,000 a day. A day. And the ability to make my own schedule. I've always lived in a relatively minimalist lifestyle. The irony of how many people who live a minimalist lifestyle but make more money than they know what to do with. There's a lesson there. And don't have much of a desire even at this point to really spend over forty to 50000 a year. No debt, substantial financial cushion, et cetera. I'm 6'2", in very good shape, work out religiously, but at this point don't have much desire anymore to chase after the contemporary girl saw either. Since I can make <clears throat> so much per day and since I love efficiency, it's hard for me to rationalize not working six to seven days a week, even though I don't need the money. I've been working six to seven days a week for over a year now. Working is by far the most efficient use of my time and anything else I'd want need. Let me take a note. I'm going to take a note. I just You just reminded me because I want you to watch a movie. Um, there it is, Hail Caesar. Put that in. Come on, R. There we go. Get that up there. Uh... Work is by far the most efficient use of my time and anything else I need, want, can easily be done by paying other people to do it. Generally could do it better than I could. I genuinely enjoy what I do and like it very much. But yes, at the end of the day, it's still a job. I don't think I could ever retire as I do like to work and most hobbies seem to lose their novelty after a short period of time. I was raised to still carry the attitude that work is an essential part of, a, of living a good life and that it isn't anything to shy away from. In fact, it should be embraced and is necessitous. Yes. Look at all the people who avoid work and see how happy they are. I really, look, look, they're miserable, suicidal, drunk, uh, especially the men. I got my IQ tested a few years ago and it's in the mid 130s. I don't think much of it until I read the curse of the high IQ and it definitely connected a lot of dots for me. I've gifted a couple copies to some friends as well. You may buy as many. That's just don't share your, don't share the book. Don't share it. Gift, buy, buy gift. Yes. A large part of me wants to work and save as much as possible as you think the economy could just go off a cliff at any point. But then, okay, let me add another one. I did take notes, but you remind me of other items here. Uh, where is it? Uh, I think the economy could just go off a cliff at any point, but then only... To then just keep working through and out the other side of the incoming catastrophic collapse as no matter how bad an economy gets, I'm pretty sure my job will exist in some fashion no matter how bad things is. Yeah, there's, we're always going to need mechanics, farmers, tradesmen, uh, doctors. I'll tell you who we're not going to need. Teachers, social workers, children's literature experts, bloggers, podcasters. Oh, my God. Um, another part of me wants to quit everything and just watch Cappy vids while drunk all day while the world burns around me. Meanwhile, having my Smith and Wesson exit strategy ready to go at a moment's notice. And I was just looking for some of your general sage advice for someone. In my, okay. Another one. Hang on. Keep it. I just want to make sure this is thorough. Just looking for some general sage life advice for someone in my situation who by all measures has it made, but is still trying to crank out a heavy work schedule. I've been working and grinding my whole life with the goal of reaching the top of that financial and personal freedom mountain. But now that I'm there, it's a strange feeling and would be weird to just take the foot off the accelerator. 
Also, I'm trying to maximize my earning potential before the economy implodes. Well, how much more do you need to maximize it? What are you going to buy? An aircraft carrier? What? Uh, while at the same time getting a moderate amount of satisfaction from work, limiting frustration from the few idiots around in my life, life most of whom I've cut out, and taming the hamster in my brain that compels me to work all day, every day to soothe its need for efficiency. I know this is long, but F you, I'm paying you, so make it as long. I'll make it as long as you damn well, please. Also, I tried submitting this on the website, blah, 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 blah. Finally, no, that's fine. Thank you for following the instructions there. Uh, we'll keep you anonymous. So, <clears throat> all right, let me let me explain and give the context. I'm going to give you the answer that you seek. It may not be the answer you like, but it's the answer you seek. All right. For the entire existence of the human race, and even before that, when microbes were breeding, however microbes breed, all right, uh, the reason you are here is because men and women got together. And until we answer uh, the, the, the mystery of the universe, why we're here and find God, whether that's a formula or what, the best idea humans have come up with is we'll breed off the next generation, pass my genes down. Right. Now, <clears throat> we can think about that philosophically with the front third of our brains, but there's a huge uh, instinctual bio program, three quarters of the rest of your brain that is screaming at you to have kids. It's always been that way. That's how we've per perpetuated as a species and all the other animals have perpetuated as a species. It's the number one thing we're here to do is have kids. Now, for the first time in human history, we have brainwashed half of a population, one entire sex, to not want that. And that would be women. And I'm sorry I'm simplifying. I know it's more nuanced. I know you girls say, and yeah, you do. Genetically, you do. But the frontal cortex, with what is nothing more than a, a cancer called feminism, and that's a euphemism if there ever was one, you have the, an entire sex, at least in the Western world, forfeiting... This human race long point and purpose, the ultimate and final point and purpose. And they have replaced it with the dumbest things ever, namely enslavement to a job and an employer. I'm not saying people shouldn't work. I'm not saying women should go to college. I mean, <clears throat> but the priorities are all wrong. And if you don't believe me, go get this book, the book of numbers. Look at the polling data. Look at the statistics and find out just how few women. Whoa, we are way out of focus. Just how few women have family as the number one thing in life. Oh, yes, some of them want to get married. Oh, yes, some of them want to have kids. But barely any of them want to be wives or mothers. Now, this creates a quandary, a paradox, a problem for all men in Western civilization. You want to go and have kids. You want to have life purpose in me. And that's what gave your point and purpose in life meaning. You had kids, and I would like to think idealistically, in the hopes that someday your son, your grandson, your great 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 grandson, your great 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 granddaughter, somebody would say, hey, we figured out the meaning of the universe and we could achieve immortality, or at least we understand it. We could get off this rock before the sun blows up and engulfs it. That's what. I'd like to think there's a goal in this. Maybe I'm wrong. People, maybe just people like to screw. Who knows? But now, an entire sex doesn't want that anymore. Effectively. Theoretically, yes. <clears throat> Genetically, biologically, of course, yes. Of course, yes. But practically and functionally, how they put forth actions and their decisions, no. And if you don't believe me, look at what they, look at actions. You cannot listen to words. You cannot listen to words. Look at actions. And, and the short, very, very short version is most women in Western civilization piss away their fertile years. They piss away their fertility and their youth and beauty. And they are so, and, and in, in exchange for pursuing a career, labor, work, politics, themselves, <clears throat> things as stupid as whining cats and fur babe, whatever, whatever supplanted religion and agency and purpose in life that feminism and uh, material in corporate America has given them. They have decided to waste their fertile years on that and not having a family, which leaves the rest of you guys in a lurch in face of this paradox. Okay. So the question you're at now, <clears throat> you've done it all. Okay. You are, sh you have shot through like a rocket at a very young age. You have shot through four to 5,000 a day. 
<laughs> you, you blew through Maslow's hierarchy of needs to now, you know, you're at self-actualization. And what you're saying is like, okay, I'm a stable guy. I'm young. And you're finding out, and well, let's read right here. Uh, I'm 6'2", in very good shape, work out religiously, at, but at this point don't have much desire anymore to chase after the contemporary girls either. Probably, I'm going to guess, because you have, and it was exhausting and taxing and painful, and maybe not you personally or right now at this moment you want to have wife and children, but genetically, generally speaking, at some point in time, you would like to have kids. And now you're in, <clears throat> even if frontal cortex, you think you don't want to have kids. I get this problem all the time with like, as is the number one problem facing Western men, bachelor men, you know, younger men. What do I do? What, what's my point purpose in living in life? Normally it was family. That's what it was. That's how you're here to have it for billions of years with microbes all the way to humans. <clears throat> Things screwed consistently all the time. And now you're here. And now we get this curveball thrown. A human get a curveball with feminine. It's not even over the plate. And we're supposed to swing at it. And you're looking at it like, I can't even hit that ball. You threw it into the stance. I'm not taking a swing at that. I'll get a strike. Unfortunately, this is this is live. You only get one pitch. And we're expected to jump up 20 feet in the air. One hand, hit it, and hit it out of the park. Even you, Jay, and, and you start to run into it. We're like, yeah, this an entire sex is not conducive to what we've been programmed to be. It is a virus, a computer virus that has a mind virus that has gotten into most Western women. Sorry, and, and I, I know I'm general. I'm, I'm sorry, ladies, it's just true. It's just true. And so now you're asking me, what do I do if not family or children? <clears throat> and I'm sorry, I don't have an answer that is going to scratch the biological itch. That's never going away. You got billions of years, if you go back to microbes, of evolution, and you have at least 200,000 years of human evolution, depending on, or some say 2 million, depending on human, screaming at you. The majority of your brain is yelling at you, screaming at you. Go put your thing inside that girl with the long hair, the big kazams, and the ass that backs up and fits into this. And that will never go away. And more, I would say, probably more importantly, although as a consequence thereof, you chasing things that asses back up into this, is where are those little rapscallions? Where are those little rugrats that I get to wrestle with and make fun of and lie to and play games with and raise? And, 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 and we play baseball and we go hunt. I can teach them how to do noogies. Where are those little, well, that's, that was, that's what would give you, that would keep you occupied. It's funny. I, I, I get such a, you know, in the position I'm in, I, I see the, the, the two extremes where I get clients like you and you're not alone. This is the number one problem facing young men today. It's like, what do I do? I got nothing else to do. And then I look at my, my friends and, and some family members who have my nieces and nephews and they, what do you do? You got time? They're busy. Oh man. Lucifer and Geronimo. You got it. Yeah, they're beating the crap out of their parents. They just have, they don't have existential questions like this. Like, I need a drink and go to bed. Man, I've seen their old man with half a finished thing of scotch. I like more than once sitting in his favorite chair. <laughs> the kids are on top of him. <laughs> what do you do? That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to throw the kids in the station wagon, which we don't have anymore. You're supposed to say, let's play the alphabet game and drive halfway across the United States, Yellowstone National Park. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No. And then you raise them and you try and you send them off to school. You send them off to marriage. And like, it was painful in hell. And then you can't wait for grandchildren. And then you have point purpose. Ask Mr. and Mrs. Hawkins. They're ecstatic. Ask Silvio Canto. They're ecstatic when they get the grandchildren. Oh, Silvio and Lincoln. Holy cow. Lincoln is Silvio's grandson. And Lincoln is, boy, he's a charmer. He's ready to go. And <clears throat> he's not even two yet, but I'm sure, I'm sure Silvio has taken Lincoln all over Tarnation down in Texas. That's where Tarnation is. You're wondering, where is Tarnation? It's down in Texas. You know, down there somewhere in central Texas. Oh. So that's where your point. And now you have your biology, your in everything screen. It's like an alarm going off. Rat, 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 rat. And the solution we go and get kids. But if you've ever watched my video, men have to accept the increasing chance that there are no marriageable women. 
I will say it again. Marriage and children are not on the menu, sir. And now <clears throat> men have to figure out what's plan B. You do, because unless you're going to off yourself and self-deletion, you're going to be here. And you've got to entertain yourself for a while. And when you think of the ultimate importance of your existence, your sentience, your presence in this universe, that you're here and now, and, and you have a big enough brain to have the concept of self-awareness, boy, you, you don't want to waste your time, do you? And now that the crown jewel and point and purpose of life has been taken away from us by feminism, I, I, and I wouldn't even say fe it, it's, it's girls have ch made this choice. It, it's very sad and tragic. Well, now that leaves the rest of you guys in an existential lurch. What do you do? All right. So I've come up with a bunch of things for you to do. And just so in, in, and now in the client specific situation, you have blasted through Mazo's lower, lower requirements of needs. And now you're in a, uh, self esteem, although I don't think you have self esteem, but belonging. And we got to jump right up to self actualization. I got news for you self actualization is a very lonely, boring place. So, the menu I'm about to give you is everything I could come up with. There might be more. People put stuff down below. But this is what you boys should do. This is all you boys have to do. And you have the luxury of having an incredible budget. Where you, I'll get to that later. Where you can do a lot of cool things. But marriage and kids are probably not going to be one of them. Right? Not saying don't, don't, don't pass up on it. But everyone needs to mentally gird their loins. And prepare for this possibility, this likelihood, so that you don't waste your time in your life. All right, so here's the list. All right, first, the career. Um, a paradox a lot of guys face, you're one of them. You're the exact case. Well, I should be doing something fun. I, I should be doing something else. I work all the time, but, you know, I kind of enjoy work. That's what you were meant to do. And what you need to do, and I'll answer the question much more quickly this way, <clears throat> watch Hail Caesar. Not because of the comedic effects. It's a funny movie. It's one of my favorite Coen Brothers movies. They either hit him out of the park or swing and miss. I think it's one of the best. But it's basically the story of a, a film studio director. He has to babysit all these morons in 1930s, 1940s Hollywood. And, it, and their characters and, you know, what's his name? Uh... He plays himself. Um, George Clooney, he plays a communist. He plays an actor who's an idiot and gets duped into communism. So he wasn't even acting. It was a documentary as far as he was concerned. Uh, so, and everyone's a moron. And uh, who's the guy? Not Nolan. Um, he played in The Goonies. No Country for Old Men. Why can't I remember his name? Well, I mean, he's the, he's the main character. And he has this existential crisis. He can go... And work, I think it's for Lockheed Martin, and the job's going to be easy, and the pay's going to be more, and he can leave all these idiots behind. And there's something holding him back. And what you find out, and I'm not ruining the movie. It's, it's, it's a very charming, it's a great movie in the end. He realizes that's where he belongs. That's his calling. He enjoys it. And if he didn't have these idiots and morons that he had to babysit in this Hollywood studio and, and Hollywood in general... He'd be miserable. Rollo has the exact same thing. 1905, I'll mark the sentence to roll. We had, watch um, <clears throat> the latest Rule Zero. I think, yeah, was it? The, yeah, I think the Rule Zero I hosted. It should be on my, may go back 10, 20 videos. I don't know. We talked about the work week that is required to achieve success. And one of the paradoxes we got to was like, could you turn it off? Rollo's, no. Why can't you turn it off? I don't know what else I do. This is what I want to do. Same thing here. You know, holy crap. <laughs> if I was, you guys are right. I won't be ever going. I, I threaten it. Like if I got $2 million, you'll never see me again. Nah, I'd still be here. Still wear the same boy. <laughs> still have good will. You could give me $10 million. I'll still steal Fresh and Fit's shirt. Hey, free shirt. They ain't paying attention. <laughs> Look at this hat at Walmart for seven bucks. Oh boy. And I'll still go to the $2 gambling table. I don't care how much money I have. This is, I don't know what I do with it. <clears throat> but I'll still be here. And so what I see a lot of guys doing is society says work is bad. You should go and have fun. Should you? 
No, not necessarily. Not all the time. Now, yeah, if you're an accountant, yeah, look at Chad Elkins. No one does likes doing tax. Chad's not passionate about taxes. I know several dentists, two of which are gals, interestingly. You know, I know three dentists. One's a guy, two are gals. They don't like looking at people's teeth. But I don't know what your profession is, but you like it and you can't think of anything else to do. And you know what, man? Every great while, every great while a dog finds bone. You're that one dog that found the bone. And I would not fight it. If you feel like working six to seven, now, nah, maybe you should take a Sabbath, okay? Um, you know, maybe sample a little bit. Here's where diversity would have some value. Try different things in life, okay? But the reason you tire of your hobbies is because you love your career so much. Good. You're thinking good. Don't fight it. Be happy. Rejoice. You get to go to work every day. I wake up, I'm tired to get my coffee. I look at the pond, I get crying, and then I'm like, all right, let's get the work done. You know, that gives you purpose and agency and reason in life. And maybe you won't have progeny. Maybe you don't have a wife, but at least in the morning you wake up. <clears throat> Here, to put things in perspective, contrast yourself against two different people. One, someone who goes to a job to slave away and they hate it. Think bankers. I think most people who are employed, they got to commute. They don't really like their job. All jobs suck. Sucks to be then. You know what's worse? The only thing, Chris Beckloff says this, <clears throat> only thing worse than ha uh, uh, having a job is not having one. Now think of all the people on welfare. Think of the neats. Think of the, the ghetto trash, trailer trash, and barrio trash. Just sit there and collect government checks. And, and they do their drugs and they drink and they play video games and everyone gets fat and then maybe you get pregnant and then you got to go and panhandle from the Democrat Party some more. Then you're all pissed off and a holy cow. Could you imagine being those people? Even the guy who like you're a mechanic. Nothing glorious, nothing bad either. I fixed five cars today. I got those cars on the road. The pride I took in putting on handles on my drawers. Putting handles on my drawers. You know what I was saying? You mean like actually just putting handles on drawers? Yeah. So they open? Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Trim work I did. Hey, he's doing trim work. Oh, you you mean just putting up, you know, painted trim? Yeah. Oh, all right. Not that kind of trip? No, not that kind of trip. No landing strips. No landing strips. <clears throat> Gives you some. So you're, boom. And especially for men, their career is, is very integral to them. Uh, women, not so much. And if uh, a career means anything to a woman, it's in a mentally unhealthy way. This is all I have. Okay. All right. I'm, yeah. You're a social. Oh, you're a teacher. Just like the literally hundreds of millions of teachers before you. Yay. No. He was a Hollywood studio director. You are whatever the heck you do in your profession. I'm an idiot blogger, podcaster type. Chad's an accountant. Our other buddy's a dentist. God bless America. You got point, purpose, and agency in life. And so that's that's the number one thing to go to. If, if for any other reason, I guess nowadays you don't have to work if you don't want to enjoy that life. But, you know, you got to live. But it also gives you a reason to get up in the morning. So that's that's like the number one thing is you need a career or a profession, all right? <clears throat> number two, adventure. Um, empirically, in my experiences, uh, adventure ate up at least a decade or I shouldn't say eat up, it gave me a decade of purpose and agency. And that ranged from, I remember the first trip I ever did, 30 years old, took a train out to Glacier National Park because my dad talked about it, never went there. I'm going to go there. And that set forth what is still today, now 16 years later, a 16-year adventure. And I've gone agate hunting and motorcycle riding in Alaska and <clears throat> these mountains, that's mountains, all that. I haven't yet to get to the next adventure is going to be going to Southeast Asia. In Central Europe, that's more of a reconnaissance and work. But unless you've traveled, it doesn't necessarily have to be travel, but some kind of adventure. Like, for example, uh, one thing that is not necessarily reconnaissance or, or quasi work. I want to pour it in a raft in Rock Springs, Wyoming on the Green River. Take it all the way to Canyonlands National Park where the Colorado River meets up to it. Take it all the way through the Grand Canyon and then kayak or paddle all the way to the Hoover Dam. That's going to be the hard part. Once I get to Lake Powell, I got that's adventure. I want to do that. And I want to do it so I could say I did it. 
I want to do it like, look what I did. I did not wait. That is out there for me to do. There's so much adventure out there. People say, why do you climb out? So I could climb it. So I climb that thing. Now, more than more than once, like more than a dozen times, I'll be driving around like, I remember climbing that mountain. I remember climbing that cliff. I remember taking a picture from up there. Now, no one cares, apparently. You know, little, yeah, your Uncle Aaron climbed that up there. Oh, look at that. There's tablet. Never mind. Everybody loves Indiana Jones. No one respects Indiana Jones. It's like, hey, I, I, I found a relic over here. Uh, hey, look, a fossil. Uh, does anybody like Indiana Jones anymore? <clears throat> oh, no. But for me, I did that. I did this. And whatever it is you want to do for, and yes, they're hobbies, but I would go travel slash adventure. Don't travel like girls do. I went to Paris and drank wine. Then I went to Barcelona and drank wine. Then I went to Italy and drank wine. I climbed Mont Blanc. I uh, kayaked the Rangoon River. I motorcycle the guys over in China who motorcycle ride, ride around China. Well, I guess they're not doing that. I motorcycled all around China. <clears throat> Another thing I want to do, I want to start at the Iberian Peninsula and ride all the way down to Singapore. Across the Russia, although the roads aren't in that great a shape. So now it's more like, well, I guess I'll just take the train. All right. That will give you, I mean, real adventure. Like, you know, uh, Ernest Shackleton type of stuff. Those, those frontiers are becoming less and less. But whatever you want to do, adventure. And that means you got to unplug yourself from work. Maybe for months at a time. I don't know if that's possible. All right. But generally, this is another big menu i were you know we're out of steak now i'm going through the salmon and the lobster and the pork okay i'm going through the big item and then we're going to get to lesser items on the menu but that's another thing is adventure camaraderie and fraternity um you need this i just had a guy kind of in your same situation makes good money not as good money as you but he's like what do i do i'm like you need to talk to people man because he works in the mines in uh australia and he does like a week on, a week off for three fortnights, two pence with whatever the hell measurements they got down there. <clears throat> I was like, what are you, you need? You need to talk to people. It doesn't even matter if they got tits or not. You need to talk to people. All right. And that is very much missing, especially now with the root beer float for you men. You men need to get out and talk to other men. Be nice to have girls. I'm going to address that later. All right. But looking at fraternal orders, clubs, et cetera. Paradox problem, okay? We can slam on women all we want about giving up love and family for career and feminism, essentially, <clears throat> and socialism. And, but it ain't like our peer groups, young men today, and by young, I mean any guy under 50, it ain't like these guys are, are carpe diem in salvaging life. Your average guy sucks. Your average guy is fat. Your average guy is unmotivated. Your average guy might as well not be alive. Because they might as well not. They're collecting welfare. They're playing video games. They're doing nothing. They're on their stimmy. They get excited. Ooh, a stimmy check. Yay. <clears throat> and it's one thing if you got it, but you had other stuff going on. But if you're like, that's, oh, oh, like that's the number one thing in your day. You got a stimmy check. Holy crap. Why are you alive? Um, or was it, oh, so your quality and caliber of your average guy. You, you know how many people I think could come on my rafting? thing with me three maybe maybe adam piggott because he's in shape he's got the time and the budget and he's also a professional whitewater rafter and he's got the stamina to do it maybe the great one he's in shape he could do it he's willing to do it i'm trying to think of like a, i'm having a hard time coming up with a third guy i really am because <laughs> most of them are in debt most, and it's not even that most of them lack the will to live. And so when you go out trying to find camaraderie and friends and fraternity, you can't find it. Why? Because most men are old. Most men are out of shape. Most men lost the will to live. And a lot of times their wives don't want them to go out if they have wives. Most times they don't want to go out. Why? Because they're fat and they're lazy and they don't want to go out. They just lost the will to live. And <clears throat> this is where you might as well have a conversation with Sergeant Rumpy Fluffalo. Hi, Sergeant Rumpy Fluffalo. What do you want to do today? Let's go hike over in the Black Hills today, Aaron. Yay, Sergeant Rumpy Fluffalo. You're so cool. Right here. 
Only three guys I know being, and, and maybe Sergeant Rumpy Fuffalo will come up with us on that rafting tour. <clears throat> but if you go, have you gone to meetup groups? Do you know how lame they are? I told the story about how I went to uh, to play Dungeons and Dragons at multiple places in different states, and all I ran into were mentally ill people with Aspergers and autism, or those who were faking it anyway. And you could not play a game because they were so dysfunctional. <clears throat> it is hard to find good men as friends. But, but you, you know, you might as well go out and give it a shot. And so one of my next steps is to join a fraternal order just to have a place to go. Uh, and it's, it's not going to be the Masons. Masons are just. And this represents that, and that represents this, and this represents... We're all about fraternity. Yeah, when does the fraternal stuff begin? I know you got a lot of relics and procedures and rituals, but when do we all hang out and maybe, I don't know, help the kids with cancer? Oh, we do that too. Yeah, but you do it like 10% of the time. The rest of it is all this, this idolatry. It's essentially my main complaint with the Masons. But I don't know, eagles, whatever else. I, and you got to find it. But also have no... We, that may or may not... We may or may not have that. That's market price. That may or may not be on the menu. Let me check the kitchen. Because it ain't just ain't just Western gals. It's, uh, it's the men too. Very low quality caliber of people in Western civilization in general. All right, another one, religion. If you believe, go find a religion. If you can, If you could come up with it in your head, go find religion. You'll belong to a team. Judaism, it's kind of like, are you Jewish? Eh. <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> what do you believe? Meh. What do you want to believe? <laughs> and the, the thing that I kind of like about Judaism, it's not even Judaism, <clears throat> it's the Jewish culture. Like, there's a culture. Oh, we like the menorah. Would you like some matzo ball soup? How about a nice sandwich? You know, it's like, okay. It's more than, what about Yahweh? Meh. <laughs> I had a client yesterday. I got to marry a Jewish girl. Why? My family's Jewish. I'm like, do you go to synagogue? No. Are you a practicing Jew? No. Well, then what? What does it marry if you marry a Jewish girl? Well, it's culture. I'm like, okay, I understand. <clears throat> but if, you, if it helps you have an existential, like if you could find a way to believe in God and there's a scripted religion that comes along with it, God bless you. Because then you know your point and purpose in life. It answers things. And then go worship. Go do what that religion says to do. And there's not, not a lot of dumb stuff in religion, regardless of the religion. A lot of wisdom in religion. A lot of rules. A lot of purpose and agency. A lot of things wrong with it, too. But then a culture forms around it. And then you belong to a, to, to a family of sorts, or at least a culture. So... I'm I'm not so dismissive of religion. Of course, being a preacher's kid, I'm like I'm still waiting for the proof. Beat me in the head and, and threaten me with hell is not going to make me believe in the pedophile with the long hair from 2,100 years ago. Okay, you got to give me more than that. He loves you, but if you don't believe in him, you'll burn. I'm three. Can I play with my Legos? We don't have Legos. We got the cheap knockoffs. Oh, yeah, I love the 70s. And that was the Volcker recession. <laughs> that was Jimmy Carter. Uh, so there's religion. Uh, in the medium, in the interim, here's another thing you could do that's practical. Do you have a plan B? You're in the United States. While you're adventuring around, while you're traveling, you should be doing reconnaissance. And maybe reconnaissance should be a, a separate thing from travel and adventure, but it kind of falls under the same umbrella. Every young man and woman needs to go and come up with a plan B. You need to find another place to live because Western civilization is not, it's not a tenable. It's not supportable in the long run. Is it going to collapse today or tomorrow? Probably not. Is it going to collapse in a decade? I don't even think so. I really don't. <clears throat> but I don't want to be around to find out. And I want a plan B. Now you got the money. Not only can you travel immediately ASAP, you can buy property right away. Right. Not only can you buy property. See, I don't have that much money. Right. Uh, you have a ton and your time is incredibly valuable. So what you could do is buy plots of land in like three different countries. I don't know, bury silver in them or something. 
and then you your, your bets are hedged. And then if something collapses, then I go over here and I work in this country. And, and I presume your your skill is transferable. It, it must be. You must be some incredibly gifted individual that people in Croatia or Slovenia or Thailand would be happy to have you. I mean, you could hire Andrew Henderson at his egregiously overpriced fee. <laughs> and say, where do I go? All right, boom. And off you go. That's a chore, a plan B. But for <clears throat> us mere mortals who do not make multiple thousands of dollars a day, uh, you you should be traveling overseas, especially if you're a bachelor with no kids and you you got a good income. Get It is a job. Get your ass overseas and go find a plan B. And if you don't have time to do that, get your ass into some cryptocurrency. Don't ask me when. Don't ask me at what price. Hopefully it comes crashing down so you can buy it on the cheap. Well, Aaron told me to buy crypto and then it went down. Yeah, no bleep. It will go down. I guarantee you. Guess what's going to happen? What's going to happen to the stock market? Well, it's going to go up. Yeah. Then it's going to go down. Yeah. Then it's going to go up again. Yeah. Then it's going to go down again. Whoa. When? I don't know. How much? I don't know. Stop asking. But the point is, there, to you have a, a huge responsibility to ensure your life and livelihood against the collapse of your kind. And this is, and this isn't necessarily a lot of people like to think collapse money printer go burn and think it's specific to the United States. This is in general. It's good to have like prepping. What if the electricity goes out? What if the meteorite hits? What if, what if, what if, what if? And there you go into like, okay, do you have five year supply of food? Do you have seeds? Do you have solar panels? Do you have a uh, wind generator? Do you have alternative property? Do you have water? That will eat up at least five years of your time. At least. And now you're further insured against either a political collapse, a natural catastrophe. Um, I know a guy. He kind of scared me. I got to call him. He says, I'm thinking about moving to Ecuador. I'm like, Ecuador? I'm like, they just had a communist guy called Carrera, if I recall. He's like, yeah, things have changed. I'm like, they must change quickly. Um, he says, yeah, this and that, that and that cheap. And they have no extradition treaties. I'm like, why do you need that? Like you didn't commit a crime. Did you? And I'm afraid he's going to say, yeah, but you know what? I copped it. This guy's old. I copped a field probably in 1968 when I was high on pot with a girl. Now that's what I'm concerned of where it's like, oh, retroactively things that we're not socially acceptable, but weren't illegal either are now completely illegal. And now you go to jail. Like, so now I'm a little concerned about that. <clears throat> but in general, prepping, having a plan B, going overseas, and, and you, the one luxury you have, you talk about efficient, but, but I make so much money here. That's not the most efficient use of your time. The most efficient use of your time would be to work a little bit, spend some time diversifying your investments and ensuring against a collapse here in the United States, among other places, and, and not political or anything. Just, you know, have a plan B. You don't have a plan B. You have to get out of here. You have to find a place that's stable and has got electricity where they're not burning the buildings down, right? Because because law and order, whatever the reasons are. Uh, you you got to like, oh, I'm going to... And you also have to build like a community. You have to go over there. You can't just like buy property. Come in. Hey, what's up? I'm the new guy. What language do you speak? <laughs> you know, learning a language be another kind of skill to perhaps learn. That wouldn't be a waste of your time. That's something to do. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, a, a plan B and prepping. Right? Another thing on the menu. I'm still talking. This is the chicken, sir. Would you, we have a fine chicken dish. Legacy. Leave a legacy. Not This is not to be popular. Okay? You look at, what's his name? Schopenhauer? Uh, I think Marcus Aurelius? Although, wasn't he? Yeah, he was He was a Caesar. This is the one I'm looking for. Tesla? They were not, in tour, they were not <clears throat> famous for the works at the time. I think Meditations was discovered later after Aurelius, uh, Marcus Aurelius had died. You're not doing it to be popular. You're doing it so that when you die and go into the eternal oblivion and you're not going into the eternal oblivion, you don't go there. There's no oblivion. You just cease to exist. Your soul doesn't and your sentience ends. <clears throat> you're not going anywhere. That's what I believe. Until someone convinces me otherwise with empirical evidence. That, oh, it's, yeah, it's this big guy in the sky with the beard. Oh, nice. Leave something. 
So then when you die, it's not now you already have a leg. This is usually where guys career overlap here. Like, oh, I, I did a bunch of people's taxes. I, I maintain dental health. It's not glorious or sexy, but it's a good thing you did. But if you want to go above and beyond that, leave something that isn't just mere service or goods and services. Did you leave a, a work of art, a book, some music? Are you good at art? What about carpentry? What about refurbishing an old car? What if you did it with your own hands? <clears throat> what if you grew a vineyard? What if you, I don't know, um, took some really cool pictures? And, and, and it, it, it doesn't have to be these. What about starting a business? Entrepreneurship. Did you leave a company? My legacy, Asshole Consulting. I am tickled that the crown of Asshole Consulting has to be passed on because ain't nobody giving up this brand name. But I'm going to die the thing will probably go to Atham. Atham's going to die. He's going to have to pass it on. It's going to become like the Pope hat. And I'm sure over time, it will become corrupted. It'll be like, ah, oh, free things. It'll just become like the real Pope. Free stuff. Oh, Western civilization and white people suck. Oh, more money. Oh, yeah, and church too and Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah, that Jesus fellow, the guy in the crowd, whatever. Yeah, since, I don't know. Something. More money. You know, and it, but leave some kind of what it, you know, some that's going to, and, and here, I'm going to give you guys a little trick. Okay. This is, it's small. It's petty. Uh, when you die, don't have your body cremated or buried in a box. Have it turned into diamonds. Now it's going to cost some money. And then <clears throat> what I did, what I got in my will is I'm, I'm created into diamonds. They think they're going to get three and a half carats out of me. Cause I'm not that big of a guy. You're taller. You're bigger. Maybe they get four or four and a half. So you get some diamonds, right? And then I have a roll of silver and a copy of my books and then a saran wrapped um, a thumb drive of all, all my books and everything like that. And then uh, I'm going to have maybe Lucifer and Geronimo. That's the hard part, finding someone who's going to want to do this. Find someone who doesn't grow up to be a fat piece of crap. And can actually, I'm like, here's why I want you to hide that one. Here's why I want you to hide that one. Here's why I want you to hide that one. <clears throat> and then over, what, 500 years, 1,000 years, 2,000 years, whatever. They'll find like, look at this ancient thing. Who was this guy? And I'm not doing it. Oh, I'm remembered a thousand years from now when they discover my cachet. I'm doing it so the wisdom is passed on. The observations were passed on. And it gives people, it gives treasure hunters something to do. So something, you got to leave something so that you pass away. You can still poke at society a little bit. Not for aggrandizement or ego, <clears throat> but just to say, hey, look, I still count. Look at what I did over here. Huh? Look at this. Can you use that? Here's some tools. There you go. Yes, in the before time, women had big boobs, long hair, long legs, backed up into this, and they were nice. <laughs> oh, no. I've always wondered, like, if evolution keeps going this way, like, essentially, when we just become, like, black widow spiders or praying mantises where the women eat us after, after, after copulation, or they kill us at least. <laughs> oh, dark, happy. All right, another one. <clears throat> This is what you can afford. The closest I can get to this in my own life as an example is power paragliding. You can do crazy hobbies, all right? Power paragliding is not that expensive. Uh, I got to wait until I build up and save up some money to buy a power paraglider, but it's basically the cheapest way to fly. You have enough money. You could be in the league of ha going sailing around the world, traveling around the world in luxury. You could get into airplanes and by airplanes, I mean, you could probably at least timeshare like an old F-86 Sabre or an old F-16 fighter plane. <clears throat> you could. I always want to play practical. I'll tell you practical. So you go into Keystone, South Dakota, I have them look it up. And there's a guy who does wood carving and there's a big, he found a big fat tree and he carved a really cool big Indian guy with feathers coming down. He's got his arms up because everything has to be linear because that's how the trees grow. And he's got rip pecks and everything. It's actually quite a piece of work. Now, if I had billions of dollars, even millions, what I would do is I would buy that, not tell TJ Martinell. I would unfortunately, well, probably what I do is I put some like uh, the gay pride flag and the trans flag in his, in his hands. And I put that and have it installed in front of DJ's house when he's gone on vacation or something. <laughs> and put a sash around the end of gay pride. <laughs> and if I was really vicious, I'd say, little kids welcome. 
<laughs> I'm gonna have a try. Probably wouldn't do it. But see, that's you gotta if you had that much money, how many awesome practical jokes could you play on your buddies? I talked about another friend. I got a <clears throat> I got a friend who moved down to Florida and he's very serious and very straight lights. And it's good because his profession requires it. He needs to loosen up, he needs to get laid. But I was thinking, man, if I had a billion dollars. He, and he's very meticulous about the house. What neighborhood? I mean, the guy spends years analyzing where to buy a place. And then he finally decides and settles on it. And then, oh, the, the dynamics have changed because he's been so long in analyzing. Um, it's no longer worth it. But I, I'd wait for him to get his perfect little house. And then I'd buy up all the houses around him and I'd paint him pink. <laughs> Just wait for him to go on vacation. He comes back. All the houses around him are pink. What the hell? I'd paint him back to the original cut because I got billions. But crazy hobbies. See, you could do that whitewater rafting thing from Rock Springs, uh, Wyoming. Atham, look it up all the way to Hoover Dam. You could you could buy it, but you could do whatever you want. Whatever earthly desires are here, you could afford it. And so that's that's what I would do if I had lots of money. I'd go kind of do some crazy hobbies. All right. Philosophy and history. If not religion, I strongly recommend you get into philosophy and history. Um, it is the closest you're going to, for a secular guy, for someone who, who demands empiricism, philosophy and history is the closest you're going to get to religion. You'll understand humanity more. You'll understand how to be happier more, I'd say. Like, wow, things really sucked in the past. Uh, and, and people are psychotic and insane. It'll provide you sanity. But it's about the closest you're going to get to, okay, why am I here? What should I do? Uh, from some guidance. One thing I strongly recommend, I got some books down below. I forgot to put this one in the description. Get the Way of Monkey book by Turd Flinging Monkey. All right, that would be a good stoic book to read. Um, <clears throat> but consume philosophy. Podcasts are great. They got history podcasts, philosophy podcasts. They're great. Um, and I, I would read, and that gives your, your brain something to chew on. You know, because you don't have kids yelling and screaming at them in the chaos. You know, your brain's like, what do I do? Well, you don't have kids yelling and creating chaos. So I, I do delve into philosophy. Um, And then there's three final ones. And these are going to become very mercenary <clears throat> and Machiavellian. Well, not Machiavellian, but practical. That itch for uh, children <clears throat> and family and a woman are never going to go away. And you could kind of quasi scratch the it for children if you got nieces and nephews. You could also donate your time to kids like through big brothers, big sisters. But I'm kind of wary of that because it's always going to be under the guise of socialism and Marxism in a nonprofit environment. And then there's always concerns you're going to be uh, accused of of uh, being the pedo, the P-E-D-O, the pedo. <clears throat> and you kind of don't want that. Okay? And I'll be honest. You're going to spend your time with most of these kids. Most of it's going to be in vain anyway. They're going to grow up. They're going to get pregnant at 14. They're going to go on welfare. That's why they're there is the part of that, that culture, that mentality. And you're not more powerful than the broken home they come from. And you could try and save them. You could do that. And, and you might, maybe you would, maybe that's worth, give it a shot. But I, I'm like, no, one, the leaders of this outfit are going to tie my hands Two, I got the threat that, Ooh, he's creepy. And then four, what is this going to do? That kid's going to go out and deal drugs anyway and get shot and maybe get three girls pregnant along the way. What, what am I going to, why am I wasting my time? I'm going to go hike. <clears throat> I'm going to go kayak the, the, the green and the Colorado rivers. All right. So you could do that. But when it comes to women, it's, it's this economics, the pure economist. You guys all know I'm pro prostitution. And in this case, I am not even talking about the sex. I hate, I don't like the word, I believe, sex worker, or I like to call them ladies of the evening, because it's been that way the entire time. Married or not, you pay for it. So I don't like using the pejoratives. Ooh, she's just a, <laughs> or even the word prostitute, I think is a bit disdaining. Uh, it's like, no, everyone is. And so are men. Are you getting paid money to do something? You, sir, are a whore. You are. You paid me. I'm a whore. I wish we'd all be. A proud in our hornessness. But then when you do something that's pleasurable to a, to a, oh God, that's bad somehow. It's like, what? but massages are okay. Yeah, what? That's all right. But sex bad. What? All right. Maybe I'm too libertarian. Maybe I'm missing something. But I am talking not even about 
uh, the act of sex, which certainly pay for, because you're going to, <laughs> you're going to, no matter how. So fly out to Vegas, drive out to Pahrump, <clears throat> get out of Clark County, go to other counties where it's legal, go out to Reno. I guess it's legal out there too. I don't know which towns. Please read the laws. Go to Amsterdam. Go to a place where it's legal and not only legal, but you know, like Canada, they do it tricky. It's legal, but we can arrest the Johns. That's not legal then. All right, so you could scrap, whatever, find out where it's legal. Fine. Um, but I would say uh, more for the girlfriend experience. Now, hear me out. Hear me out. Aaron, that's simping. Kind of is, kind of isn't. <clears throat> if you actually believe this girl likes you, a perfect example. I'll tell the friend a story of mine over in Vegas. Guy walks into my cigar lounge. I don't own it. I just like to call it my cigar lounge. Hey, how you doing? He's a good friend. I like him. Great guy. Nice girl with him. Oh, hi. I'm like, oh, this is whatever her name was, Amy. Oh, nice to meet you. Blah, blah, blah. I say, uh, you guys dating? No, which is an honest, like, are you guys on a date? <clears throat> yeah, you know, kind of. She's looking all nervous. It's just weird body language. Like, okay, that's odd. Oh, how'd you guys meet? Oh, dating app? I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> and I forgot how I've, I think I got kicked under the table or something or his buddy. It's like, yeah, that, that's an escort. I'm like, oh, and then get to talking <clears throat> and find out they show up on time and they're nice. And that was a sad observation I had where if you're on a legitimate date, there's drama, there's antics. The girls are catty. They're cold. You got to play dancing monkey man. But when you pay, when you pay, the girls know what to do. They're nice. Now they're being nice because you're paying them, not because they like you. But having that experience, having that uh, <clears throat> um, stimulation will satiate the unconscious part, 75% of your brain. Up front, you know what's happening. You're not delusional. That is where I'd say the difference between a guy who knows what he's doing and a simp exists. But if you if you need a, a, a female company, you need an escort, go get it. Because it's sad, but it looks like, and I even looked this up. Some guy, he said to my 13 days on seeking arrangement. And about how the girls showed up, they were nice. They were attractive, right? That immediately is a plus right there. That's going to fire up a whole bunch of unconscious things and, give you some uh, endorphins and all that. <clears throat> but the key thing is they were nice and they showed up on time. And, you know, that's worth the money, right? And in, in your case, dude, what's a couple hundred bucks to you? If if you you come out ahead, you come out way ahead. And this is why I'm another big proponent of ladies of the evening. If you're making lots of money, you don't have the time to go to a bar, swiping on apps, asking 10 girls out, five say yes, one shows up, that one is lying about her pictures because she's overweight, and then she mentions her kid. Now you go go back through the – no, no, no. Here's the money show up, and I'm <clears> – mark my words, and, and this is why I'm recommending – I want to find a, a wife. I know this is going to sound unconventional. People are going to disagree with it, and that's fine. I understand your disagreement. A lot of these gals are using these sugar daddy sites for generally encompassing term to find a guy that's got a job because for as much as we complain about the gals, the selection of men are not that good either. And I know one guy in particular who uses seeking arrangement and this guy is a top notch guy. And the girls are like, what's wrong with you? He's like, what do you mean? What's wrong with me? Like you're normal. Like you, you're just normal. All the other guys are weird. And the reason he uses secret, he doesn't have time. He makes a lot of money. He's just, and he just wants female companions. They come over, they cook dinner. Maybe they have sex, maybe they don't. And I think that might actually be the future because there's already a screen. I Again, I don't delineate. You're going to pay for it anyway. Although I looked at Seeking Arrangement. It's incredibly expensive. Oh, my God. I thought like oh, you just meet up with someone, you got to pay somebody a stipend, a monthly stipend. There's that, but then you got to pay a monthly fee. And I think it's like $100 a month. I'm like, dude, do you know how many Ford hats from Walmart that is a month? Brand new Ford hat every three days. Uh, so maybe that's still priced out of people's range. 
But for you and for successful bachelors, and you still want that female company, you know, like uh, Firefly, the uh, wasn't a courtesan, what is it, a companion? You just want a female who is nice. And admittedly, she goes away and she doesn't like you or anything like that. It's, it's purely a transaction. But you still want that veneer. You still want that <clears throat> um, um, not physical, although I don't know. It would be a physical stimulation. I'm not meaning sex, like the physical presence. There's a beautiful girl there. You can, Hey, all right. You get a little bit of an – like, oh, that's nice. Thank you very much. Do it. Why the hell not, man? You can afford it. You know, just, and, and no headache. No lost, you want to talk about efficiency, no lost time at the bars, no lost time on dating apps. Here's the money, show up on time, be nice. More or less sounds like that's guaranteed. Now that might change. <clears throat> Somebody else was telling me that one of the sugar sites, they're starting to get just as catty. I don't know. I haven't used it. I know it's hypocritical of me to it, but I'm just going off of agents in the field report. But that's something to consider. That's something to consider. Like here, show up on time, be nice, be attractive. Not even necessarily hot, dress nice, wear a dress, have long hair. Hey, a woman. Well, you're kind of a lady of the evening. True. But it's a woman and she's here. And then you know she goes away and she's not yours. And no harm, no fight. And then you go, oh, that was nice. I had a pretty lady here. But I, I, it's not under your your question, um, but I do believe that's the future of dating, at least in the Western world. I do believe that. All right, uh, second to last, hold out for wifey kids. I'm not saying if you see a cute girl at the restaurant or at the at the grocery store, don't ask her out. I'm not saying there aren't quality women that could make what, and there's not traditional. There, there's there's some, there's few, but there's some. Um, but don't dismiss that. That's what you want. That's what you're programmed to have. Don't fight that earth. If you find a gal and you start down, wow, this might, and she's not like, oops, I forgot to mention I have a child. Well, I have $100,000 of student loan debt for my early childhood education degree. Oops, 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 oops. Oh, I'm sorry. I got a little, little disease down there. They exist. Last my statistics show me they're one in 100. If you want to see what the statistical chances are, get this book. The book of numbers, it goes through what your statistical chances are. It will put your expectations over, but they do exist. And even the last chapter of that shows you what you could do to dramatically increase your chances, but have no expectations. But I also don't want you to pass up on that. So you may still get wife and kids if you want them. And I've I've known a lot of guys, man, when I had, even if they got divorced and butchered in divorce, but man, when I had kids, it was totally worth it. Cool. I think that makes complete sense. I don't want them. I like having food. I like not being a fo I like not being po. <clears throat> but I don't know one guy that regretted having a kid, not one. Cooper, Pop, um, who else? Fitch, all those guys on Rule Zero, they all got kids. They all love their kids, love them to death. And they, and they, they do not regret having their kids, absolutely, and despite what they had to go through. <clears throat> um, so and then finally, what was the final one? Oh, yes. Uh, forgive yourself, guys. I, I keep telling you, it's just not your time. You're born in the wrong generation, guys. We're born in the wrong several generations. It is not your time. You just happen to come to the restaurant when they were out of steak. World famous steak. Life. World famous steaks. Life. Loving wife and kids. We're out of wife and kids, sir. Sorry. Oh. It's not your fault. <laughs> Look, you weren't a bunch of pissed off angry Marxist, soulless, mean women back in the fifties and said like, whoever wrote the, the thing that the, the problem that we could call this the, the men's problem that has no name, right? You, you weren't a bunch of angry, spoiled psychopaths who came up with this horrific brain virus that essentially has destroyed and wasted three generations of, of half the, half the population's life and consequently the other half. You didn't, come up with this. I don't know how many times I got to go back to 1984. Hey, what are you? What are you in the fourth grade? You're like nine, eight. What are you? Are you even 10 by that time? Whatever. You're a young person. And you're our teacher. I'll never forget her. And I hope, I hope she's dying a painful death. 
she had the the best skilled athletes, if you could call it. You know, they were they're just better. The kid, you know, there's kids who are really good at basketball, and and, and me and the other guys weren't. You know, we weren't that good. <clears throat> and she had them wear wigs and put on skirts and just beat our butts at basketball. See, look, you're getting beat by a bunch of girls. That's what she did. It's like, no, you cross-dressed a bunch of guys because the girls couldn't do it to beat some other guys. I mean, what weapons grade level of evil are you doing that to nine-year-old boys? All of the kids, all of them, not just the ones you're trying to make fun of. I And I know her name and I've tried to find her because I want to hunt her down, not to do anything illegal, but like, hey, remember that? Yeah. How are you? How's your life? Oh, divorced? Old? Waste your time? You're fat too, I see. How'd that go? <clears throat> anyway, with that, you know, guys, you never stood a chance. You never stood a chance. And it's only gotten worse since whatever, Reagan's first administration. I don't know if you've noticed. I mean, your enemy, your public enemy number one. We're only this, we're only this far away where you could actually say women are programmed to hate men. You're, I, I don't think they're pro explicitly, they are certainly programmed to be adversarial towards men. They're certainly programmed to believe that they're victims of men. We're only this far, we're only on that side of you hate men. But they're certainly not your teammates. They're certainly not your life partners. And they're certainly not your, your first officer. They are not your support team. They are your competitors at best, adversaries at worst. And soon they're going to be, or well, you're going to be their sworn enemy. Even like, I, but I like you. <clears throat> and being born into that environment where various political forces, namely leftist political forces, have weaponized, and that's their goal. They take different groups of people and divide them and, and pit them against each other. It's no different than like, you know, bored soldiers in Iraq where they take, uh, I don't know, a scorpion and a spider, make them fight. That's what leftists do to, to innocent otherwise groups of people. Let's make these two people fight. Now vote for us, vote for us. See the scorpion, he's going to try and kill you. Well, the scorpion was way over there. And now you put him in here with me in this little jar. I don't know if I really got a choice now. They're agitating it. That's Democrats. <clears throat> and that's what they've done with men and women. So the, the thing is, you have to accept that, that for the first time in human history, one sex has been programmed to completely disdain the other. And really, I know they, oh yeah, they think they want to have, but they, there's no consideration because they're what the other sex might want to form a healthy family and not get divorced. Altruism, selflessness, those things are the key to love and forming a family. That's a <clears throat> but they are programmed to not want you. I mean, they even say it. I mean, we don't need no man. Fish bicycle. They say it. Okay, well, I suppose you don't. I mean, that's like the supply chain. We're not, we're not bringing your steak cow steak. You know, it's like, World's greatest steak out. You don't get no steak. Okay. Well, I guess, and this is the only restaurant in your life. So you go in there. Okay. I know you advertise steak, but we don't get no steak. Steak don't need no customer. What else you get? Fish. Da 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 da. I want to. So forgive yourself. This is not your fault. <laughs> this is not your fault. This is a bunch of pissed off, predominantly boomer feminists with <clears throat> as some older. Harkenings than that, but but more modernly because they're the ones alive. This is a bunch of pissed off, bitter feminist boomers and now bitter spinster Gen X gals. And, and Lord knows what's going to happen with millennia. It's just going to go on and on and on until someday women are going to have to have agency and say, wait a minute. You know, <clears throat> here, ladies, I'll speak to the few ladies. Until you girls actually become strong, independent women and tell the hive to F off. And have the strength and courage, true strength, true courage, true, true strong, independent woman saying, no, I want a husband. I want to be a stay-at-home wife, and I want to raise the kids. Until you stand up to the hive. That's right. But the hive, the women will say names against all too freaking bad. You cowards, you weaklings, you'll throw everything away. Because what? A bunch of weapon grays, biachachachachachas. And Kuanta ha 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 has want you to be miserable like them. Yay. So until some truly strong and independent women who are honest with themselves come up and say, yeah, F that. 
I like men. I want a man in my life. And I'm not going to lie to men. I want you to be strong. I want you to be able to beat other people's asses. I want you to make some money. I want you to, and I want you to throttle me in bed. Until that is brought back to the foot. We like men again. We're going to work as a team. This video, unfortunately, is going to have a lot of germaneness. It's going to be relevant. Way off of that. Now, there will be fewer and fewer people being born. Although, you know, hopefully, ladies, you get that IV in the in virtual or the, the uh, what is it called? The test tube. Hopefully, that'll come along. Uh, and we'll have test tube babies while, and, and you can brainwash them, and it'll just, it'll just be a miserable life. Just, and then people can be like, what's this thing for? I just, I just defecate and urinate with it, but I have a feeling it had another point and purpose. No, it's no purpose. None. <laughs> Mom, dad, where do babies? Well, foolishly assuming they're even be mom and dad teacher because those would be the lord master teacher how do babies come out well they come from in, in, instead of the stork they come from the test what do you mean where they come you come from the test tube here's the facilities for once it won't be a lie yay how much yay humanity yay team human all right <clears throat> let's get to some super chats and i gotta get going um Let's see. <clears throat> I will do a miss super chats because I know I probably missed some. So I'll go through it later. Uh, Romas, ta whoa, Tata Vickius? Vickius, you tell him, Cappy, your advice, your advice have helped me. Okay, I presume euros. You must be uh, Central Europe. I'm going to assume. Well, thank. You. I'm glad. I'm glad it helped. I'm glad it helped. Channel 1800 Dumb, our New Zealand agent in the field, where it's, it's very late at night out there. Two New Zealand dollars. Cappy, you're up the bum count one more than me. <laughs> no, I, I think four or five, but I think only one liked it. Uh, you guys are. Um, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Guy Savelli, $5 again. Thank you, Guy. Uh, boo, boo, doo, boo, doo, boo, doo, boo. A lot of comments here. Let me go to that. All right. Uh, boo, doo, boo. oh, let's go, Nomad. Uh, two bucks. <clears throat> Women are ruthless to each other behind the scenes. Yes, they are. You have no bigger enemy than than your fellow woman, ladies. But I, hey, what there's hiking to do. There's life to live. I got a lot of living to do. That's a Vic Valari. Everybody look up Vic Valari. I got a lot of living to do. There's people to do things that say. Even though he's kind of Irish, Aaron Clary is a quarter freaking Jew. <clears throat> That's a happy song. A lot of living to do. Not going to worry about you girls. Just scroll and make sure no one has to get banned. Da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. I think that's it. All right. Oh, finally. <clears throat> uh, before we go. 419, subscribe to the channel. I want to get 100,000 so I get the proud plastic thing from YouTube. Otherwise, nothing else happens beyond that. Also, if you need more than what I've gone through, we're pretty, pretty thorough here, hour and eight minutes. I have linked to three, uh, four or five books below. Batch of Pad Economics, The Book of Numbers, Analyzing ROI and the Pursuit of Women, Reconnaissance Man, Curse of the High IQ, How Not to Become a Millennial. I think those are the, there are others. But if you read those books, they go into much more detail and practicality and deep philosophy and a deep dive. And so if you're looking, what do I do if not women? How about you start reading those five books? They're linked down below, right? And... <clears throat> I hopefully I painted a path for you. Hopefully I've given you a menu from the from the menu of life to pursue. But if you need a little bit more of the details filled in or execution, it's in those books. And it'd be a long time to read. They're in Audible, so you don't have to you don't actually have to sit and read them. You could be kayaking down the Green River and listening to them. Um, but yeah, so so go ahead and get that. And that's about it. And then any questions, assholeconsulting.com. Do I have any more? That's it. All right. The Miss Super Chats will be later today. I'll see you guys later too.